start with the conclusion. Moon is a sci-fi film in which a private company has started to mine helium-3 on the moon to use as an alternative energy source in the hopes that it is a solution to the infamous energy crisis. Although the film was made with a relatively small budget, it presents plausible solutions to huge social issues. In this video, we will explore the scientific theories behind this movie and consider the possibility of mining helium-3 on the moon as an alternative energy source. Today, the world hosts over 7 billion people whose constant demands for energy is starting to take a heavy toll. The world's fossil fuels account for some 80% of the world's energy, and projections by various organizations show that they will run out in about 50 to 200 years. Renewable sources such as wind and solar power have been proposed and developed, but are still minimally used because of their expensiveness and other reasons. With deadlines coming up, the Earth needs an alternative energy source. The answer, we believe, can be found on the moon. This answer is helium-3, one of the two stable isotopes of the element helium. It consists of two protons, one neutron, and two electrons. Helium-3 is non-radioactive and has the power to efficiently fuel nuclear fusion plants, with an efficiency level of 70%. 25 tons of helium-3 has the capacity to generate enough energy to power the USA for one entire year. Unfortunately, helium-3 is extremely rare on Earth, but scientists have reason to believe that there are vast deposits on the moon. There's a lot of helium-3 in the universe, but there's very little helium-3 on the Earth. And the reason for this is that all the helium-3 diffused, captured on the Earth, diffused into the atmosphere and that diffused into outer space. The problem we faced was we didn't know where to find large amounts of helium-3. The sun is the biggest fusion reactor in our solar system and the biggest producer of helium-3. Helium-3 is actually manufactured in the sun and leaves in the form of solar wind. Solar wind being charged is deflected by all bodies that have magnetic fields. Another point to make is it's absorbed into the upper atmosphere by all bodies that have an atmosphere. And if you look at all the bodies in our solar system, the moon is the only body that has no magnetic field or no atmosphere. The consequence of that, the consequence of that is that solar wind is positive on the surface of the moon and has been for over 4 billion years. The question we have now is, how much helium-3 is actually on the moon right now? The moon has been hit with 500 million metric tons of helium-3. A question we have now is, what happens after we actually get helium-3? It goes through a process known as nuclear fusion. Fusion, as opposed to fission, does not require a heavy, dangerous element. Fission works by breaking apart two isotopes, releasing energy. In a fusion, we're actually fusing two very light elements, which are usually hydrogen and helium. The goal is to produce fusion er energy with as little radioactivity left as possible. There are three generations of fusion. The first generation of fusion is, involves deuterium and tritium. Deuterium is a naturally occurring isotope of hydrogen, also known as a heavy hydrogen. It appears in all water around the world. Tritium, on the other hand, is a very rare isotope and it's very radioactive. The second the second nuclear stage of reaction involves helium-3 and deuterium, and it's a very clean nuclear reaction. If we look at the third generation, which would be even harder to make fuse, we are, we are looking at the helium-3, helium-3 reaction. It's essentially fusing two helium-3 atoms. This is a perfect cycle, as there's no radioactivity associated with the release of this kind of energy can actually release nuclear energy from helium-3 atoms with no waste. The waste of the helium-3 reaction is hydrogen and helium. You can use the hydrogen, the waste product, and use it as a fuel source by burning it. The key 
element is that we're burning it in oxygen and the waste product of that is water which we can use to bathe, drink and many other things which you use water for. If the world were to not use any other source of energy including solar, oil, etc, etc and solely relied on helium-3 the earth could sustain the power it uses today for thousands of years.